Good morning, YouTube. How are you? It's AJ giving you an update on uh, the issues I'm having with the 75 as well as my uh, new strategy for the Zeovit as well as going back to that Calc Wasser uh, two-part um, dosing method that I was going to experiment with last summer. So let's go ahead and pick up where I left off. Um, in the last video, for those of you that watched, I was having issues with um, cyano, uh, diatoms, as well as just extremely cloudy water from probably a bacterial bloom or some sort of algae spores in the tank. Uh, with that being said, I reached out to y'all to see if there's anything that I needed to do as far as with the Zeovit system that I wasn't doing before. Because um, last year I did have success with it, however I was running GFO, which I learned completely stripped the system of phosphates and caused other issues to fall out of balance. I'm not doing that this time. Um, so I went ahead and reached out to Brightwell Aquatics themselves since it's their Zeovit system that I'm using. Um, Gave them all my parameters, which of course everything checked out. Um, told them everything I was dosing, everything I was putting in. And of course the first thing they said when they saw that I was using the Red Sea Coral Pro is, it's their salt. Can't use that salt, it's dirty, it's messy, it's, it, it's just not a good homogenous salt. Um, use our salt and then they gave me a couple others such as uh, Tropic Marin Continuum, which I also know is Brightwell Aquatics, and then uh, one other one. And, so I, I, I kind of took that with a grain of salt. I was like, oh, they're just trying to sell me a product. Um, I've used their salt before, didn't really notice any advantages. Um, I do know it's all man-made and it's supposed to replicate natural seawater um, elements. But, so I did a little bit of research. Um, so I went ahead and actually looked into Red Sea's ultra low nutrient system uh, program. Um, since I'm dosing the NOPOX on the 45 and having you know success with that tank. Uh, and their ultra low nutrient system said they don't recommend using the Coral Pro salt either. They recommend using their regular salt just because it has less elements, less nutrients, it's less, I guess, dense, um, so it allows the user more control as well as the elements in the net, in the Zeobit system to kind of take over, or in their case, their uh, just their ultra low nutrient system, which doesn't use Zeobit. So once I saw that, I was like, perfect, I'm gonna go ahead and Get the Brightwell salt. I've tried it before. You know, um, it's a little, it's affordable. Um, plus, I'm using everything else Brightwell. So then I started doing some research to see if I could find any information on the Brightwell salt. There is no one out there in YouTube or on the forums that I can find that uses this salt and has done a review. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for you now. I mixed up my salt um, this past weekend. I did a total of. Well, I did like a 90 gallon water change after everything's said and done over three days. Um, but I mixed it up in batches of 35 gallons a piece since that's what my uh, mixing station can hold. Each time was at a specific gravity of 0 0.025, or 1.025, excuse me. I got a DKH of 8.8, .8, um, an average DKH because I tested each one of 8.8, .8, um, an average calcium of about 400, which is lower than they advertise, um, and then a magnesium of about 1160. Um, which I think is spot on. If I take a look here, it's it's a little low. They advertise 1288 on their bucket. A little low, but most salt mixes are a little low. Um, so with that being said, I use my other salt container because I'm still going to run the Coral Pro on the 45 gallon since it's not a new low nutrient system and it just helps with my uh, reduce my dosing and maintenance on that tank. So I went ahead and compared the two. I was getting a DKH of 9.5, which is at the same specific gravity, which is much less than the 12.12 uh, that they, or 12.2 that they uh, advertise. I got a calcium average of 420, and then a magnesium of 1250. Which all those are lower than they advertise, but still in good ranges, um, especially if you're looking for accelerated growth. Um, so now, with that being said, uh, we'll go ahead and put Coral Pro away because I'm not using that on the 75 anymore. I'm strictly gonna use the Neomarine. Um, when you guys first get the salt, you will notice it has kind of a funky smell to it. I'm not sure what that is, but it mixes up perfectly. Um, it, it's real consistent, I've noticed, um, as far as how the water turns out, how quickly it mixes and stuff like that. I, I've only had it in here in the tank a week. I haven't noticed any uh, negative side effects as of this point. I'll give you guys an update here in a couple months after it's been in there a while. Um, so what I did is Friday through Sunday, 
I did three, uh, well, the first one was a 30 gallon water change with the new salt. The second two were 35 gallons. So all in all, I did about a 100 gallon water change on my 75 gallon system um, to ensure that there's nothing but the neomarine salt in there. I instantly noticed clearer water. Um, as, that, as Brightwell advertised, whatever was going on with the reaction process of the Zeovit system in the Coral Pro, and or their Zeovit system in the Coral Pro, it was probably causing an abundance of elements and nutrients in the system that I just couldn't test for or detect, which was causing bacterial bloom and algae spores. Um, I'll show you guys the tank here in a second. It is noticeably clear. Um, I'm due for my next water change, my weekly water change here in a couple days. Um, it's noticeably clear. I am still battling the cyano. Um, that's something I'm going to have to probably knock out with water changes as well as um, if it comes down to it, maybe some chemi clean or something. Um, so as of right now, I, I'm happy with the results and how everything seemed less stressed. Now let's go ahead and put the salt away and bring up the dosing. So. As I mentioned, I need to go ahead and uh, figure out another dosing strategy. I was just going to run calc wasser on the 75, um, but quite frankly, my tank evaporates a lot of water, which means I can definitely get a lot of cal uh, calcium and uh, carbonate in the system because it evaporates a gallon and a half to two gallons a day. Um, it's pretty hot still here in New Mexico, um, and it's actually our monsoon season, so the swamp cooler isn't working very well, so the house, house is even running a little warmer than normal. Um, I don't like having to refill my auto top off container every two or three days. I'd like to go a week. Now that is amplified when there's calc in there because then that starts throwing off my other elements, um, such as calcium and alkalinity. It's, it, it's just amplified. So I, I like the idea of a steady pH and I like the idea of you know, you know it's gonna be equal calcium and alkalinity being dosed. That's why I like calcoster, it's simple. It's also kind of messy when I have to clean out my auto top off container. So I'm currently dosing, or prior to the salt change, I was dosing uh, a teaspoon a gallon, and I've got a five gallon reservoir. Um, and that was, that was keeping me where I'm at, um, keeping me in optimal levels, about 410 and uh, 8.5, uh, actually sorry, about eight dKH. Um, and I've got very few corals in there, but I'm starting to stock heavier. And I also want to start making sure there's other elements dosed equally, um, in relation to calcium alkalinity, kind of like the Red Sea, uh, coral care program, or I don't remember what it is that they call it, but the, whatever they dose everything in correlation to your calcium and alkalinity consumption. That's when I started looking at the Brightwell code A and code B two part system. Um, your code A is going to consume or include calcium, strontium, and magnesium. Your code B is your carbonate, bicarbonate, as well as uh, borate. It's both also, it doesn't do every element such as potassium, iodine, ferion. What you know, the list is endless as far as nutrients you can dose. Um, but it does dose these growth elements, borate and, and uh, strontium, in relation to the calcium and alkalinity. I like that idea. It's one less thing I have to worry about dosing, one less thing I have to worry about testing, one thing I know that's going to be more consistent. So I've, I'm just going back to the uh, two-part in calc wasser. The calc wasser is mostly going to be to uh, help alleviate the cost of consuming these because this is not cheap. Um, these two bottles are $10 a bottle, and so far it's been three days, and I've gone through half a bottle of each. Well, sorry, half a bottle of Code A and a third of the bottle of Code B. So this is going to be to help offset the cost as well as maintain a stable pH. Um, it'll kind of keep my calcium alkalinity up. I'm going to reduce amount of calc wasser down to two, two to two and a half teaspoons for my five-gallon reservoir, um, just to kind of offset it. And then as of right now, I've been testing every day using my HANA DKH checker, as well as my Red Sea uh, Reef Foundation uh, test kit. Um, so far, the last two days, I've had a dose of 140 milliliters on average um, to keep my calcium at 420 parts per million. And then I've had a dose anywhere from 20 to 30 milliliters of the code B to keep my uh, alkalinity up at nine. Um, right now, it's dropped from about 9 to 8.5, 8.4 daily, 
and then this actually calcium drops from 420 to uh, 390, 380. So as of right now, I'm just dosing these two manually. Eventually, once I kind of have a good baseline after this week is over, I'm just going to dose everything in equal parts in relation to my alkalinity consumption, like you would with a normal um, two-part system. And I'm hoping I get the consistency of the normal evaporation um, as well as the cost benefits of the Kalkwasser, but I'm hoping I get the growth and coloration that you get with dosing a more balanced um, system. I will eventually get two more BRS dosers and, and automate this, but I want to get a good baseline over the next week to two weeks of testing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tank and you guys can see how things are looking since changing over the salts. All right, guys, here we are at the tank. Um, as you will see compared to the last video, noticeably clearer water. Um, very happy about that. I can actually look and see the tank and not just see a brown cloud. Um, everything's looking pretty healthy. Um, I do have some bleaching on some of the corals, but that's because I just added a couple and I played with my lights a little bit. Um, the, the lights are going through a two week acclimation period and gradually going up. They're about 50% of what I typically will run them right now. Um, but let's just take a look. So first off, you will see that there's a little bit of what appears to be cyano forming on the sand um, in some of the lower flow areas, as well as on some of the rock structure. Um, but then there's also like th that brown rust looking algae, I'm assuming it's diatoms. Um, but it's, I think my cleanup crew, because if you look at like this rock and down here where my cleanup crew was actively working last night, I think they'll kind of get that under control. And then if I can just keep doing my uh, water changes, um, I will get the uh, cyano under control. But the corals um, seem to be doing okay. There's a few new ones in there. Obviously the scully is an easy coral. And then that's a blue tenuous I just got from Vivid Aquariums uh, last week. So it's still trying to get some of his color back. My strawberry shortcake, um, it didn't like the light. Yeah, I think when I first put it in there, it, it um, bleached out because I acclimated the light over a week and it just didn't like it, so I backed it down. My bonsai is doing very well. It's already encrusting and it's keeping its colors and its polyps are always out happy with that. Same thing with that random macro that I got to test the system. Acan's not too happy. I'm thinking because it's probably in a high flow area, I'm probably gonna have to move it around to the back. Uh, the Mystic Sunset is experiencing some bleaching. I actually just moved it today from this upper ledge where it was getting a lot of light down to this lower ledge. Uh, frog spawn's doing good. Rostozoas are opened up. Wait for them to start growing. I got this green cap with blue polyp Monty right there. Um, let's see if I can capture the polyps. It doesn't look like I'll be able to. Um, that hasn't had any issues. I just got it last week. Um, as well as this blue acro, it's doing very well. It's one of the first ones I put in there. Red planet, the polyps aren't always out, but it's maintaining its coloration. Um, and it's actually getting a deeper red, which I'm happy for. Same thing with the Jedi mind trick, its polyps are out. It's experienced a small bit of bleaching, but it's starting to encrust the rock. This galaxy cyphastria that I got last week, it was in a highlight spot and I just moved it again today because it was not, not happy. I'm hoping to get some of its color back, but it's, it's, it's doing pretty well. And then I got a Recordia Garden, which is an easy coral to take care of. Um, but yeah, so this is the system as of right now, guys. Um, I'll give you another update uh, here in a couple weeks to see how everything is doing. So until next time, like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, hit me up. I'll be more than happy to help. And if you have any information, let me know. I could always use the help myself. You guys have a good one.